Hello, my name is Steve Goldberg, and in this lesson we're going to be looking at immigration to the United States in the late 1800s and early 1900s, focusing on Ellis Island in New York, which is pictured right here. The United States is often referred to as a nation of immigrants, and up to this point in our course, we will have seen three other waves of immigration, uh, Native Americans, the colonial immigration that happened, including slavery, immigration from 1800 till about the Civil War, and this fourth one, which we're going to be focusing on, the time period from 1850 until 1920. And during the peak of that wave, um, Ellis Island opened in 1892, and from then until about 1924, more than 12 million people came into America through Ellis Island. It's hard to empathize with 12 million people, so in this video we're going to trace the journey of one ship, the La Bretagne, which traveled in 1906 from France to New York City, and we will trace its route. I learned about this ship, the La Bretagne, and where it sailed from in Le Havre um, from this thing called the Manifest. And that's a record of all the passengers on the ship. And we will look in detail at the manifest when we meet in class on Wednesday. So this is a postcard showing the La Bretagne docked at the French port of Le Havre. And on this ship, there would be, just like with airplanes today, there's first class. And then on this ship, there'd also be second class passengers. And then the folks who were at the very bottom of the ship in an area of the ship called the steerage. And it's called that because that's where the steering cable would run through. Um, those are sort of the third class passengers and those are the ones who will be going to Ellis Island. The first and second class passengers are not going to have to suffer the indignity of going through Ellis Island. And on the La Bretagne, um, well, we'll think about how many people you think would fit on this ship. So what we're looking at right now is Google Earth. And if we zoom into France, right about here, this is Le Havre. And it's the biggest container port today in all of France. And Le Havre actually means the harbor. That's what it translates to in French. And if we zoom in here, you can see today there's a large ship docked at Le Havre. Now, the La Bretagne was 500 feet long, and this red line represents 500 feet. So this ship is pretty close to the size of the La Bretagne. So what we are going to do is look at, if you went from Le Havre to Ellis Island, how far would that be? Well, there's a measuring tool on Google Earth. And we can see that that's about 3,500 miles. And what I'd like you to think about for class on Wednesday is how long you think it would take a ship to go from France all the way to Ellis Island. And the ship would come here after some number of days and would then enter New York Harbor. And if you're familiar with the island of Manhattan, that would be Central Park. This is downtown where the Twin Towers were. And this over here is the Statue of Liberty. And that would be the big image that people would see coming into the harbor, assuming they came in after 1886, because that's when it was constructed. And that's what it would look like. It'd be a pretty impressive picture to see as you're coming into your new country. Now, interestingly, ships don't like La Bretagne can't land at Ellis Island because they're too big. And we'll see that in a minute. Um, they would have to go up to other ports such as Hoboken, New Jersey, or some of the ports on the New York side here. And this is about what the ship would look like when it came in. And this blue rectangle is 500 feet long by about 50 feet wide. And just to give you a little perspective on how big that is, let's 
bring the ship to Research Triangle Park. Specifically, let's bring it right here to Research Triangle High School. And if we were to magically bring the ship into the parking lot, that's how big it would be. And a cool thing to do with students would be to have them actually come out and walk off 500 feet by 50 feet to get a sense of how big the ship is. Again, that I think is a great tool with Google Earth of helping to build empathy. So let's move our rectangle representing the Labratagna up to Hoboken. This is where first and second class passengers would be checked on board and allowed to leave the ship. And then any first or second class passengers um, about, about whom there are any questions and m almost all of the folks in steerage would then take a short ferry ride down this way, about two miles down, not a long ferry ride, back over to Ellis Island. And the ferry would get off here. And let's take a look at what the ferry might look like as it docks. So that's a pretty good picture of what it looks like. It would be very crowded, everyone having their luggage with them. And when it docked at Ellis Island, people would come off with their luggage and head into the uh, large processing facility. Now, these are the infamous stairs that folks would have to walk up with their luggage. And this was actually a opportunity for doctors to watch and see if anybody had trouble going up the stairs. And if they did, they would mark that person's shoulder with a piece of chalk and the inspectors inside would know to give those folks a little extra scrutiny to make sure they weren't sick or diseased um, before they came into the US. Today, Ellis Island is a museum, and this is an actual picture from Ellis Island. Um, and it, as you can read in the caption, most folks were processed between three and five hours of waiting in lines at Ellis Island, but about 20% of folks had to stay overnight in dormitory rooms. And these triple bunks look pretty tight, but actually compared to the conditions they had traveled in in steerage, um, this is a vast improvement. So assuming folks passed all the inspections at Ellis Island, they would get on another ferry boat that would take them to a, a very nearby destination. This is the old railway station in New Jersey. And if we zoom in there, a little bit, the ferry would dock along here. And if we pull up a picture of what it looks like today, you can see these are the slots where the ferry boat would come in. You would head into the railway station and then presumably you would have a ticket to your destination and um, that's where you would head to. So just one final point here. This is Ellis Island and again, more than 12 million folks came through that during those peak years that we looked at. But if you were coming from Asia, you wouldn't land in Ellis Island, you would land over here in Angel Island. And about a million people landed in Angel Island between 1910 and 1940. And this is the San Francisco Bay. And right here inside the bay is Angel Island. And it served a similar purpose to Ellis Island over on the East Coast. So you've got Ellis Island, you've got Angel Island. Folks also would be coming in in places like Galveston, Texas, New Orleans. And if we shift up to the Northeast, it wouldn't just be Ellis Island, it would also be Boston, Philadelphia, and actually number two with more than two million people coming in would be Baltimore. And uh, that's in part because the b and Railroad is right there and folks could uh, get again to their destination. And not to leave Canada out, two other big demarcation points are um, Halifax and Quebec City, if folks came down, if the boat came down the St. Lawrence River. So that's a look at where folks would be immigrating into the United States around the late 1800s, early 1900s. And I hope this video has raised a number of questions for you. And what I'd like you to do before we meet on Wednesday, if you have a chance, is go to this shared Google Doc. I'll send the link out to you. Go ahead in and record questions that you have in here. It's, it's fully editable. 
And um, I started you off with a few that I mentioned in the video. How long would the voyage take? How many passengers were on the ship? How many of them were women? And I was wondering the breakdown between first class, second class, and steerage. So you go ahead in here and type your question and then put your name after that. And we will start with some of your questions and then we'll get into our analysis of the primary document that manifest that um, that's where I got a lot of the information about where the ship traveled. So thanks for watching this video and I look forward to working with you on Wednesday. Thanks.